All right, folks, I uh, regret to inform you I once again don't know where Ben is. I <clears throat> This is starting to get a little much. Um, we can, uh, I don't know, I guess get started without him and maybe he'll come in. I guess he could be doing, uh, I don't, well, there's actually something on his desk. Let me, what the fuck is this? Looks like some kind of uh, scary letter. What do we got? Dear Emil, we have your bitch. He st- <laughs> he stinks and he won't stop crying. If you ever want to see his cute face again, send a point eight Bitcoin to an address that will be given to you when you call this phone number, 888-555-0129. If you fail to comply, we will release tasteful naked photos of Ben on the internet. Hmm. All right. Well, uh... I guess that means I'm podcasting alone. I guess that means I'm podcasting alone. All right. I guess that means I'm podcasting alone, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, We'll finally get to do my uh, David Letterman thing without um, Ben here chiming in. Uh, All right, folks. I don't know. uh, What do we got first here? You guys seen this in the news? Uh, Texas State University. You heard this? They're offering a course on Harry Styles, a whole class based on Harry Styles. You know what? That one kind of bums me out. Ben does love uh, Harry Styles, so that one kind of reminds me. So let's try another. We, we could do this without Ben. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Everyone knows this one. Uh, you guys see this? They're, the 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 sport of Quidditch is trying to change their name uh, to distance themselves from J.K. Rowling, controversial figure. Uh, I thought it was going to be from distancing themselves from sounding like such dorks, right? Ben, fuck. All right. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, one more, one more. How about this? Uh, we've all seen the headlines, you know, British, British countries hitting uh, hottest, hottest, hottest days ever, record-breaking. All right, you know, that, that, that one's tough, too. I feel like Ben would have done his uh, British impression there. Um, you know, I need to get Ben back. Hold, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the number because this is not uh, working out the way I thought it was. Let me see here. Uh, hi. It's a it's a it's a meal. The uh, got your got your letter here. I guess you have my bitch. <laughs> well, I mean, how am I, uh, I got to transfer all my stuff to Bitcoin, I guess. Yeah, well, it's actually very simple. Have you ever done a Bitcoin transaction before? Never, but I, I'll do anything to get my boy back. Of course back. you haven't, you fucking idiot. <laughs> okay, I okay, feel like there's right. no reason to talk uh, to me okay, like so that. it's actually really easy. Sure. So the first thing you're going to have to do is, uh, do you have a Bitcoin wallet? No. Okay, well, you're going to have to, okay, do you, have a, do you have an iPhone or an Android? Yeah, yeah, iPhone. Okay, so you're going to download, just like, all right. uh, it's a pretty simple, it's a basic, straightforward one that is pretty user friendly. And even the Do you work you for Coinbase? Up. Yeah, Coinbase. Okay, I got it. Spell it right. Yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so now you just need to transfer USD. Hopefully you have enough. Uh, you broke dipshit. <laughs> okay. So you transfer it and then you need to set, okay, so you're going to want to buy Bitcoin. Just yeah. Put it as a market order. Luckily the just, price is tanked, huh? Luckily, the price is tanked, huh? Yeah, well, shut the fuck up for a minute so I can walk you through this. Thanks, because if you don't shut the fuck up, uh, we're going to release these tasteful nudes of your bitch. (laughs) I feel like that's not even much of a punishment. I just want my boy back. Yeah, well, just be patient and we'll get through this, okay? Okay. Okay, well, so, all right. Uh, Hang on. Okay. Okay, so you're going to just want to hit buy. What was that? Buy Bitcoin, you put in uh, 0.8. Yeah, all right. Uh huh. Okay, now you just hit buy. Sure. Go through, bitch. Y- yep. Well, yeah, quit calling me Bitcoin, bitch. <laughs> okay. You bitch, what are you. <laughs> what's wrong? What's that sound? Hang on. What's, what's going on over there? Hold, hold on. I just need to put some. <laughs> I need to put some ointment on my mouth real fast. Is this Ben? Uh, Is this Ben? Who? Ben. Ben Wait, Con. What did you say? I am asking you if this is Ben. 
It's a meal. I called you. You called me? Yeah. Are you? Do you have a glove on your hand right now? Are you? Fuck. You know, I was this close. Ben. I was this close. What? 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 What were you doing there, pal? I was. I was so close to scamming you, man. I almost had you. I almost got the Bitcoin out of you, but, but then I just, blew it. Your own ass got 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 the best of you. My own ass got in the way. Wouldn't be the first time. Definitely won't be the last. <laughs> I believe. Let that. me tell you. God damn. You almost had me there. I was scared. Yeah, I could tell. You were trembling. You were shaking in your boots. You know, it was. I was a bit excited at first, but then, you know, without the... Uh... Yeah, you only said, uh, like a hundred times in the beginning there. I could tell that you were... <laughs> you were... <laughs> <laughs> Apple shares were just getting hammered this morning. Every day they're pounding it. Bit- How did you like my ransom note? Good. I like that you used um, Would you ransomizer.com. Have... Yeah, it's a great resource for those who want to commit or are considering committing well, a kidnapping. If you're doing like a school project. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, well, this came out great. We have your bitch. Oh, God, I almost had it. I almost fucking had it. You almost had the Bitcoin. Yeah, because I was going to give you my Bitcoin address, but it's so long. Oh, right, your phrase. Uh, yeah, and I just, Whoa! sorry, sorry, fuck. Whoa! Sorry, sorry for that girl out there who's like, don't burp in my ear. <laughs> well, that's s- just that one. Sorry, comment. toots. See, that's what they used to call women <laughs> toots. Does it stand for tootsie? Mm. Why do they call people toots? Hey, toots. I have no idea. Huh. I think they used to call them a lot of stuff. Yeah. They used to call people a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, might as well say hey to Glenn and give everybody the shout out that, uh, you got to check the disclaimer. Oh, we actually do have one shout out to give. Who? Remember the guy from, uh, Red Lion? Oh yeah, Jay. Jay. Shout out to Jay from the Red Lion Tavern. Yo, big ups to Jay. In Los Angeles. And also Mitchell in New York. Nope. What? That's the, the delivery guy <laughs> who's, who uh, said hi to me on the street. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, he was cool. Uh, we gotta, you gotta, you guys gotta, you guys gotta step up the comment game on YouTube. Why? What's happening? We need more, just more. We need more comments. How many are we getting? I don't know, like, uh, yeah, 150 in the last one. How many should we should have? Should be a thousand. Oh, should shit. be a million. We need 900 more people. We need 900 more people to comment. Cause like 30,000 people watched it, but qu- big question mark above my head. I'll, only 130. But also, 150 the rule people. is nice comments only, right? Yeah. Well, no, actually, go mean this time. No, don't. If you want to go mean, go for it. <laughs> Just be nicely mean. Mm-mm. Gentle roasts. You look really nice in that. Sh- is that chambray? What is that? I don't know. It's just like an old shirt. Picnic table shirt? I look like I'm going to, uh, like, my dad gave me a shirt on, uh, like, when the teacher's like, D- wear, wear an old shirt we're going to be painting. We're doing paper mache. No, it doesn't look like that. All right, great. It just looks like looks like a shirt, man. It's definitely a shirt. No one can deny that. Yeah. Folks, say what you want, but you cannot deny the man is wearing a shirt. Go ahead and try to... <laughs> ben is also definitely wearing a shirt. Yeah, my nipples are pop. God damn, my nipples just pop way too much. It's also, do not forget to... I feel like we always forget to say what? it. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, yeah. We said comment, but you also got to fucking smash that like button. Then you're yeah. going to want to hit the subscribe button because we are getting closer and closer. Every day we inch towards smooching each other. Also... Subscribe at TMGstudios.tv. Oh, you yeah, you support the show. gotta do We got that. a great after hours today. I am going to tell Emil, I got a brand new credit card. <laughs> I got a brand new credit card. It is the uh, Chase Inc. card. Okay, save it. Don't give and me too much here. I'm going to tell him how... Uh, Apparently, I'm going to get one, too. Well, because I did a beautiful scam that's going to... Save it. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just giving the tease. I'm You're not going to tell them. You're giving too much. It's like the trailer where I see everything that happened. I'm going to tell... Oh, I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't be flashing my... my Jesus. <laughs> it's okay. They don't have the security code on the back. Yeah, there you go. Oh, God. But that's only three numbers. They can figure that out. Punch it into a random generator. Yeah. They don't have my address, though. You need my address. 
I'll give it to him. It's. I know your address. Do you know it by heart? I pointed to your head. Is it? Close. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Alex, (laughs) that. I w- should we- oh man I I got a couple things before we get into the everyone's fighting over what the right, session right, is. Right. What's what do you I had got? my what do you got? What do you got? so I had my t- quick trip to New York City uh, to help Erica move in to her place with the dog. We brought the dog with us. Uh, there was a guy sitting across. I went to the dentist. She recommended me. Oh yeah, how was, was it? It was very funny. Why, dude? Blasting. Like old crooners, like I'm filling out my crooners, like Frank Sinatra, uh, okay. like Dean Martin, like literally at one point you would know that I, it's like an instrumental. It's like, and the horns are fucking like, like I'm filling out my That's my good forms, music, but it's so loud. Oh really? <laughs> I wanted huh. to ask her, are they all like? Is that always, or did I just have a weird day? Yeah. And the guy was pretty nice, but he said, you know. Is everything fine? Everything looks good. And I said, but I got one filling a while ago and it's still like a little sensitive. And then all of a sudden he just takes his little fucking thing and he just hits my tooth like four times. And I I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> He's like, sorry, that's the only way to tell. I was like, just give me a warning, my guy. Knock on the tooth? Yeah, no kidding. I'd take the crooning music over what my dentist has, who I've been going to since I've had teeth. It's just soft rock. It's like Coast 103.5. Yeah, but what is the volume at? Low. It's very Dude, low. Dude, my guy is blowing our eardrums out yeah, with the... I'd, I'd prefer that. Fly me to the moon. Because then my hygienist, who I love dearly, her tummy is always rumbling. Either she just ate or she's hungry and it's always... <laughs> right in my ear. Damn. Debbie, you okay? You got to go toot or something? You got to go toot toots? Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. So skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the summer sun. HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with quick breakfasts, lunches, snacks and desserts, and more. Going away this summer? Update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. Plans are flexible so they work with your changing schedule. Foolproof, step-by-step recipes mean a joyful fuck. (laughs) <laughs> Foolproof step-by-step recipes mean a joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. I love HelloFresh because it saves me a ton of time and effort. Cooking sucks, but HelloFresh makes it not suck. It makes it simple, easy, e- fun. Oh, yeah, baby. And it makes me feel like a damn gourmet chef. You know what my favorite recipe Tell is? Me. Balsamic fig sirloin. Ooh. Yeah, no, that ain't a restaurant. That's Shea uh, Shea Ben. Shea Ben, yeah, that means Chef Ben. No, go on. That's not what it means. Uh, <laughs> go to hellofresh.com/trill16 and use code trill16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. That's hellofresh.com/trill16 and use code trill16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Okay, so New York. So New York. This guy Sorry. sitting across was talking all loud about his Airbnb exploits, and it made me so mad. Wait, who was this? Just some guy. On the subway? Just, no, on the on the plane. Oh, on the plane. Talking about how he has a ton of Airbnbs and how... In New York? I don't even know where. Oh. But it just... I, I, I didn't realize it, and I wish that we had brought it up with Graham Stephan, and we've talked about it. Just... The Airbnb model is so such a detriment to housing. Oh, it's destroying cities. Yeah, because these people like this dickhead are just buying up properties that otherwise would be 
rent it out to normal people, right. but they're doing it as a business, and he's just talking all. On, he just sounds like one of those guys. So yeah, what I do is I, you know, buy a property and then I refinance that to get a down payment on another property, and then we do this automated thing where we have like you know, it's just a turnkey system. Just to just fuck you. It's just, it's it's also changed the landscape of tourism the way you know, like Hawaii is especially bad. It used to be like there'd be a tourism section, right, on yeah. Oahu. It's like you could go to Waikiki and there's all the resorts, right? That's where you go stay because that's where all the hotels are. Yeah. But now people just put their houses up all over the island. So people who just live there are just stuck with people coming over and partying. Yeah. And right in their neighborhood. Palm Springs and, has yeah. the same issue. Yeah. It's Every a- city is now just, there could just be some jerk off yeah and then he was bragging about his little trick to get around airbnb he says you can't just post your information because airbnb will flag you because they want you to use their platform so what i do is included in the pictures i'll have one picture with my phone number on there wait i don't get it so like he can get oh, around he doesn't want to give them the fees right yeah, yeah yeah so people will see that he's got his phone number posted and then just message him privately text him or whatever and say, hey, John B. Dickhead, whatever his name is. That's his name? Yeah, John B. Dickhead. He do be Dickhead. <laughs> but the, the poor dog, by the way, did not pee. So we the, the flight was like six hours. So we're done with that. Yeah. Okay. The flight was like six hours. <laughs> the flight was like six Jesus hours. Because we had to go around some storm. Uh, so it was way longer than normal. She didn't pee in the pet relief area at the airport going there. So she, the dog didn't pee for like a total of 10 hours. And then we finally get to the apartment and she she just casually like sniffs this bush and then just unloads on it. <laughs> just piss. So the story is just that the dog took a big piss. Yeah, the, okay. the, the All right, no, for sure. So everyone... Because well, we got a great <laughs> laugh out of it because she just casually... Because we took her out at the airport. Like, go pee, go no, 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 Yeah, for sure. Yeah. She got in our laps Big on piss. the airplane. It was so great. Ugh, cuddly dog. But yeah, then Mitchell, this guy, I was walking in Brooklyn and he just turns his head and goes, Ben, hey. And then we walked together to the train. It was sweet. He was very nice. And then I won the Volvo. I thought there was going to be more to New York. No, no, we that's got pretty much some it. Some guy was talking about Airbnb. Dog on the plane, t- dog, not even in New York. Dog took a big piss. Yeah, dog took a big that piss. That was your New York. I took her on the train, which was cool. I took her on the subway. She was too scared to go through the turnstile, so I lifted her up over it, and she was like, oh. hmm. Big hit. Everybody loved her on the train. Yeah, so my new Volvo. No, no, no. What? I, I got to tell you about Airbnb. I started, because we've been making fun of it, and how it's worse than hotels and everything, and so I started looking into hotels. Hotels are so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, you get the you, you're paying a premium, man. They services and whatnot. I don't know. I haven't stayed in a hotel in so long. I stay. I prefer a hotel, way better. I don't have to deal with it. It's it's a meme now that Airbnb has all these rules. Like, well, you can't check in until five p.m. and you have to be in. You know, the curfew is like ten p.m. Please be quiet. Don't have anybody over don't yeah you know and sometimes it's like our neighbors will be watching it's more expensive if you have more people sometimes yeah it's just it's bullshit i remember we we all went we stayed at this house up in the bay area and uh we didn't want to pay all the money so my friend was like yeah it's just me i have to come for work and then but all the we didn't have time to make the beds so he was like yeah sorry i I slept slept in in, every bed he's like i just couldn't get comfortable (laughs) I told you, I talked about on here at the time my first Airbnb experience, right? With yes. the, the turd in the mm-hmm. toilet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was unflushed. Uh, but real fast. So I did buy a, a, a Volvo. Mm-hmm. I won the auction for this beautiful car. Don't Why worry, don't you folks. talk about it in After Hours? Because there's a lot of people who probably didn't even know about this. Well, I will. I will. But I got to use this as Craigslist. If anybody out there oh wants my to God. buy, well, come on, help me out of here. Serious inquiries only. I've got a 1989. Post it to Instagram or Facebook. No, 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 no. Or... there's more people here. <laughs> Jesus. All right, go ahead. Do your I've ad a, for your car. I've got a 1989 Volvo 760 Turbo. It's great, but it's, you know, it's old. It's an 89. It's a salvage title. It's got 270,000 miles. <laughs> All right, let's start the show. And if you want it, just DM me. But 
Serious inquiries only. Don't waste my time, please. Guarantee you're not going to get any serious inquiries. I know. It's probably going to be people making a yep. hundred jokes about... <laughs> also, also, feet, are you going to include feet pics? I got Bal- Bahrainian dollars. I got Bahrainian dollars lined up. All, All right. Yeah. I put this in here because it's very... So the it's funny because the White House and everyone is having the uh, the exact conversation we had on this show about the true definition of a recession. Did you see this? Yes, um, the White House. What they they put out a PR a press release. <clears throat> yeah, it is. It is weird. There's so they basically updated and updated everyone. It was like because the GDP numbers are coming out, and they were like, you know, two consecutive negative GDP numbers does not mean we're in a recession because they don't want to be in a recession. Uh, and it came out today, negative point nine percent. Yeah, yesterday for you guys, and so. Everyone is doing the thing like, well, we're in a recession and they're trying to hide it, but yeah. it's more complicated than that and whatever. And so here's a little video of uh, us. And, you know, anyone here works for the White House, just, you know, watch our show. Maybe give it to Joe Biden. You guys can uh, figure it out. When are they going to rename it the POC House? Let's uh, hit play on that. Where we are today. If things are going so great, though, then why is it the White House officials are trying to redefine I guess it would be useful if I had my monitors in. <laughs> I can't hear. It's okay. It's, it's fine. Okay. Just... Yeah, it's okay. Keep playing. Redefine recession. No, we're not redefining recession. If we all understand a recession to be two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth in a row, and then you have White House officials come up here to say, no, 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 not that's not what a recession is. It's something else. How is that not redefining recession? Because that's not the definition. That is not the definition. Brian Deese said in 2008, of course, economists have a technical definition, which is of a recession, which is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. I can tell and you this. And yesterday said mm-hmm. two, consec- two negative quarters of GDP growth is not the technical definition of a recession. It what is not. Changed? It is not. Why did he say that it, it was? It is not. I can, sp- I can speak to I can speak to you to what it's he also, said it's, it's yesterday in front of all of you, which is... Uh, Peter Dushi. Also, honey, I shrunk the kids on those microphones. Look at those tiny <laughs> little microphones. Teeny weenies. So some people think we've, we've done it. We're uh, maybe in a recession. But yeah. it depends on whose definition you're going by. Listen, I under, I think I understood, and it, it's kind of what Kyla was talking about too, where we're only in a recession if we will it. I think the White House was trying to stop everybody from collectively willing it to happen just by going off of that definition of, hey, two consecutive negative quarters of gdp doesn't have to mean we right. are in a like a recession in the in the sense that everybody thinks of like losing getting fired and not being able to afford rent it just just these two negative quarters doesn't have to mean that so please everybody chill that's what that's what i took it as right yeah take a chill pill everybody especially the fed who has just done another interest rate hike yes to uh 0.75 75 basis points, point yeah. seventy five percent to their target rate of two and a half or something. Man, did you see that they're, it's on the docket to ban members of Congress from yeah. trading? August, I think. Yeah, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> Jesus H. I saw some, I think Unusual Whales posted the most, the, the biggest dollar amount by a congressional member that's been traded there was one guy yeah who, it's like their pin tweet always we could probably see it. dude there was one guy who traded like 50 million dollars worth he's just fucking good at it dude well also well that doesn't mean that he profited 50 million dollars also i wonder what these people's net worths are because there are some members of congress who are just rich so nancy f- nancy for sure but i do wonder yeah if if all these people were necessarily i don't know it, it shouldn't be allowed <sighs> Oh, it's the same thing. I mean, the, people are also calling for the same things because right now we have a lot of Congress members holding crypto, trying to introduce crypto bills and stuff. Uh, I don't know Kirsten Cinema and Toomey's holdings exactly, but I know they just introduced something um, that would exempt small crypto transactions from taxes. Taxes. Yeah. Uh, I'm down for that. That's that's good, right? Don't we want that? Mm, why? Isn't that good for crypto and for my Bitcoin? Oh, I guess you want it. <laughs> but I'm serious. Isn't that good? Because then that means that the small transactions gives it a chance to kind of 
catch on? Mm, I don't know how much it'll help. Yeah. I was almost going to ask the guy who I bought the Volvo from. Because are people really using them for crypto? But Wait, Volvo. we're getting, we'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah, we will. Uh, hey, guys. We want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode. Click up. Imagine having one extra day every week, more time to cook healthy meals, work on that novel, or just binge some good reality TV. You know what I would what do would with my do? extra day? What would you do? A freaking sleep. Uh, Catching up on sleep. Don't I know it, brother? Netflix? Now, it's all possible with ClickUp, the productivity platform that'll save you one day a week on work, guaranteed. Love that. ClickUp began with the premise that productivity was broken. There were too many tools to keep track of, too many things in entirely separate ecosystems. There had to be a more productive way to get through the daily hustle. ClickUp is the one tool to house all your tasks, projects, docs, goals, spreadsheets, and more. ClickUp is built for teams from 1 to 1,000. Ooh, it's one packed. 1 to over 1,000. Over 1,000. It's packed with features and customization options that no other productivity tool has, so you can work the way you work best. Whether you're in project management, engineering, sales, marketing, or HR, ClickUp has easy-to-use solutions that create a more efficient work environment. So join the more than 800,000 highly productive teams using ClickUp today. 800,000 people get an extra days. We love that. Use code TRILL to get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for a year, meaning you can start reclaiming your time for under $5 a month. Sign up today at ClickUp.com and use code TRILL. Hurry, this offer ends soon. Let's talk about... <laughs> what should we get to next? Wait, did you seriously want to talk about your Volvo again? No, no, no. <laughs> I, was, I was kidding. I, no, I, I wasn't, but I, I did really have a moment. I was like, what if I paid him in Bitcoin? Because I tried to sell him some right, of the money right, and right, it right. didn't let me it didn't let it go through. Because Ben's insolvent. No, it's <laughs> it was like all of a sudden I'm sending thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, they have to some a limit. Guy. They have yeah. a limit. Thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, and it didn't let me do it. Does PayPal charge you a fee to send money? I don't know. Why don't we talk after the show? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to post pictures for everybody. So yeah, everybody's Let's... fighting over that. Meanwhile, so much happened this week. Yeah, a lot of people were Ugh. messaging me this the story about Amazon getting into healthcare. Yeah. Um. It's also not their first foray into healthcare, but for anyone who didn't see, Amazon, wait, what was their first foray? They have uh, like pharmacy. They, I think they bought like pharmacy oh, companies. Pill dot com. Yeah, and, shit. and yeah. Uh, ain't got nothing on Mark Cuban's discount drug. Yeah, what emporium. is it called? It's like Mark oh, Mark yeah, Cuban's yeah. amazing, incredible discount drug emporium. Fantastic website. But so one medical. This is actually this is a big one. This I think this will be their third largest acquisition ever. Uh, wow, Three point yeah. nine billion dollars for one medical. It's a subscription service for a modern doctor's office. I'll tell you what. I had the hardest time figuring out what this is for. What this doctor's office is for? Well, just because you have it like on top of your insurance. Oh, oh. Because at first I was confused. I thought it, so. Yeah, here one medical oh. pitch includes an app, twenty four seven access to unmanned telehealth services over video, and guaranteed same or next day appointments available through more than twenty five one hundred twenty five offices. Honestly, I think their big sticking point is the next day appointment, same or next day appointments, because yeah. like looking at it, I'm uh, I'm like I have all that through my insurance. Is it one hundred ninety nine bucks a month for the year? Oh wow, that's I know. I was cool. almost like, why don't I? I should just get rid of my health insurance and because. I pay more than that per month. Yeah, no kidding. Me too. And I just went to the doctor for my annual physical, and he was just like, okay, you're good. And yeah. I was like, that's it? Yeah. And now I'm like, am I ever going to... I guess if I break my ankle or something. Yeah, that's the thing that sucks is I, I, I only have health insurance for catastrophic things. But even then, you run the chance of the insurance company just finding every way to not pay for it. Right. Which is terrifying, but... Or they take you to the wrong hospital, and they're like, no, you, you, we don't cover this one. Oh, yeah, goddamn. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. I, I went to one medical a few times. I got in STD, New York? Yeah, or... STD tested there. I had this rash on my... Is it like... But it, it's not like urgent care. It's like a real... No, it's like a doctor's office. It was really... I had a great experience. So you can go even if you're not a subscriber? Uh, Yeah. I would just... I think it was covered by my insurance at the time. Uh. Um, at BuzzFeed, but 
I had a, I, I thought that I had HPV or genital herpes or something. Sure. And um, it sucked because at the same time I had been trying this gold bond spray, like non to, to it was dead of summer. And I was like, I got to stop. I want to keep everything dry. And I went and the guy was like, it annoyed me so much. He goes, we don't really test for HPV f- PV for men because it always, the test is so wildly unreliable. It's just kind of, you might have it. Good luck. And I told him, well, I've been using this gold bone spray. Yeah, but if, all right, whatever. It ended up being the gold bone spray because okay. I stopped using it and then it went away. But and then I introduced it like... again. Well, yeah, I, sorry. I thought it was herpes. Listen, I don't have anything. <laughs> wait, wait. Right? I would practice safe sex with a helmet and a seatbelt just like everybody does. But if it, it wouldn't look like a rash. Well, I, I'm, I'm using rash just as a throwaway. Like it, it looked like I had, because I would spray it. Yeah, it looked like, you know, sores. And, but it was from, it was an allergic reaction to this gold bond spray. Okay. Yeah. And then I stopped using it and it went away. And then I was like, all right, this is exactly what the doctor said to do. Try it again and see if it happens again. It happened immediately again. And I took it away and then I went and I got tested and everything. And he's twice because I insisted. For what? Everything. All right. Everything. Ow. All right. So one medical. You liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I mean, I, it, was a, it if, was a clean office. It was a great experience. There's a they have a they have a funny video of uh, I, I want to watch the, it. It's very like they're it's the millennializing of of literally everything. Every, yeah, look here's them. I, I just love that this this is a part of their pitch. It's the doctor's but, office reimagined. A lot of thoughts. Less clinical. Into- more comfortable to furniture. All of the selection Ooh, we that we do in the stupid books. From the <laughs> we got so stupid little colors books. to the stupid fabric. books. Less clinical. We choose the pieces that we do to try to make. It I don't feel care about this part. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy. To make it feel residential or yeah. something you'd find in a great hotel. It also doesn't even look that nice. It looks like bullshit cheap IKEA. Yeah. yeah. They are fabrics that are wait, wait. all bleach cleanable. Wait, wait. We're like so 30 seconds into for... this, and all they've talked about is the furniture. Dude, that's the whole video. They're, they put out a whole video on... The doctor's office reimagined. Nah, man, I want it to smell like bandages. <laughs> I miss Dr. Nation's office, where you walked in and it had a distinct smell, and the lady was like, that's a $5 copay. Let's get you fucking, let's also, do your height. Like, the, they're, they're focusing on the wrong thing. It, w- it was never the furniture. It's the lack of access. It's the fact that we yeah. can't go to the fucking doctor. Yeah. Not like, no one's like, oh, my fucking doctor doesn't have bleach cleanable nice furniture. Yeah. Oh, this is real. I, who is this for? Who, what, what? This is. We should ask Adam about this. That, well, so I went. I was. I was so curious. I've. I've been. Um, like googling around, and I got. I found myself on Reddit, and people were talking about it. And mixed about reviews. One medical. Yeah, mixed reviews. The thing people do really love is. So I think it's always on top of insurance, and a lot of people's employers were paying for it. Mm-hmm. So they weren't even paying for the fee, and then when they had it, they got the ability to get same and next day appointments, which is huge. Yeah. But the way they do it, because people's complaint was, you're not necessarily always seeing a doctor. A lot of times oh. you're seeing a physician's assistant or oh. a um, nurse practitioner. And they're as good as idiots. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's probably it's true. It's it's probably just as good, but I think... Yeah, it is. I think that's the thing. So they maximize, you know... The doctor's just going back and Googling all your symptoms anyway. They're Amazon Ask buying pain it, though. They're and, getting, yeah. you know, they're doing... Uh, I've gotten YouTube pre-roll ads for futuristic doctor's offices this is an it's always some dork who's like come oh, on in forward yes come yes, on in dude forward is a new way it's another one where i can't tell are you insurance because that was another one where i was like should i just get this instead of paying all this money for health insurance yeah. i literally never use it it's funny i was i i think they changed up the ad probably because it didn't work very well because at first it was like a really hot guy in like a tight black oh, shirt yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like Ford is a new doctor's <laughs> office that's that's revolutionizing healthcare. First, let me show you how the machine works. The pre-roll, it's a pre-roll ad and it's like 10 minutes long, which is insane cuz who's going to sit through that? But you, I did. You. Yeah. And then the next no, one No, but I think they got me cuz I was curious. I'm always like, yeah. "Well, I don't want to pay all this fucking money." So I'm like, "Let yeah. me see what this is." But I also don't want to come and talk to a computer. I don't want an algorithm to Yeah. I don't know. I guarantee that one will get acquired too. So that it's, and it's not just Amazon. Like a, a lot of these co- huge companies are going to be your healthcare provider. Walmart has a, is like 
quickly becoming a yeah. huge healthcare provider. Walmart optometry. Um, not just optometry. They're doing all kinds of shit. I'm uh, waiting for McDonald's to get into podiatry. Walmart has some, rapidly been Dr. ramping Dr. up its healthcare business, providing retail customers robust primary care service and, services in select locations. Offer services such as primary care, dental, counseling, labs and x-rays, health screening, optometry, yeah. hearing, fitness, and nutrition at a Walmart. It's depressing. 3M getting into the game. Oh, 3M is spinning off their... Yeah, yeah, the healthcare, healthcare thing. Yeah. And I think part of the reason is because they're they have so many lawsuits, it's a way for that to get it off of their books. Cuz they like off of 3M's oh, yeah, books probably. and raise some additional capital that would go to combating those, but yeah, one of the big ones is some earplugs that didn't work for combat veterans that suffered hearing loss. I didn't even see that. Yeah. I got a really specific ad. I don't remember was it YouTube pre-roll? It was for some Millet some one specific military base in North Carolina from like the eighties. All these soldiers that were stationed at that one base were exposed to some chemical and they've got a specific URL for it and everything, like Fort Sumter cancer lawsuit. And they think by the stuff <clears throat> they can tell by the stuff you're clicking on, you have some kind of severe brain damage induced by a chemical that the government put out. Buddy, it doesn't take it doesn't take an algorithm to see that I've got brain damage. <laughs> I do wonder. They're like, he, he wasn't even born around then, but the, he's clicking all the same stuff. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's got some kind of uh, holes in his brain from the worms. Oh, no, but I, I, every time, I always think we're so close to, you know, I'm like, we're going to do it. We're going to have single payer health care in this Taco country. Taco Bell health insurance? No, no, no. Just let me get the words out. Okay. Go ahead. Single payer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, it does. Yeah. Single payer health care. I was like, well, it's only a matter of time. But I think the truth is that uh, just <clears throat> all of our major corporations will fold health care into their portfolios and we'll just have to go straight to Amazon, Target, mm. Walmart. At least give it a better Google. name. Google. Yeah. Google. I would trust Google health care. Would you? Yeah, I'd let the quantum computer tell me whether or not I got brain worms. Or how big they are, how long the worms are. I just want to know their names. <laughs> Do you want so to know I can one? communicate with them. Look, guys, let's work together in there. Come on. Come on. <laughs> no, over here? Okay. All right. Oh, hey, guys. We want to take a quick break again to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Fabric. We love Fabric. I know, I know. It's summer, and the last thing you want to do is think about boring old life insurance. Snooze. But hear me out, especially you parents out there. Fabric has incredible term life insurance policies that can be customized to your family, and you can be up and running in just 10 minutes. Fabric was built by parents for parents to help make it easier to manage your family's finances. Fabric is all online, so everything is on your schedule. You don't need to schedule anything or make time for phone calls or appointments. Just apply online when it's convenient for you. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply. See your quote and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Fabric's new lower prices mean significant savings over other providers, with great quality policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. Fabric also has over 1,600 five-star reviews on Trustpilot.com, and it's fully backed by Vantis Life, one of the most trusted names in life insurance since 1847. So you can feel confident that you're getting a high-quality policy that is perfect for your family. Fabric has a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can cancel at any time. Fabric's online hub lets you handle all your family's finances in one place, not just life insurance. You can create a will, start your kid's college savings plan, and even set up a rainy day savings fund. Protect your family's financial future with Fabric. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash trill. That's meetfabric.com slash trill. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash trill. Fabric insurance agency policies issued by Vantis Life, not available in New York and Montana. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. I do, I just, that reminded me. I do have one more part of the dog piss story. There was another day, the, the second day, it's, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Come on. Hey. <laughs> How about if we have time at the end, you tell me the dog piss story. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, just because it's. No, uh, no, all right, fine. Tell the dog okay, piss story. Okay, okay. So I was walking the dog are. and I'm in a good mood. It was the next morning. And um, she pees and she leaves, you know, a huge puddle of piss and we're walking real slow. And this older woman, 
uh, is walking her dog. She's probably in her 50s. She's got her little dog. Her little dog comes up and sniffs the pee. And I just thought, yeah, I'm in an affable mood. I'm going to make a little joke here. The woman's back is to me as her dog is sniffing the pee. And I said to the dog, I said, excuse me, sir, uh, that's her piss. Like, like this is my dog's piss. That's her piss. And the lady just turned around, didn't, just looked at me, and I just went, I was just kidding. And she just went, I know. <laughs> I just, so me and that lady are having a similar reaction. Yeah, I just was like, <laughs> damn, that's New York, baby. This lady really just sh- iced me out about my dumb little joke. Sorry. Thank you for entertaining no, yeah. that. That reminds me of, I, I don't know if I told it. This is one of the meanest things I've done. It wasn't that. It's not that bad. Tell it. It's just, it's it's a similar vibe to that lady. What? So basically, we were when we were in Greece, we met up with these um, people we had met on a boat we were with earlier in the day. Uh-huh. And, you know, the... The dance bars weren't opening until literally like 2.30 or 3 in the morning. So Dang. we would sit there and we would just drink until we would go. And so we're, we're we're with these people and we're just drinking all night. And we're like, all right, they're probably open. Let's go over. And we get in. We're having a great time. It's four of us. We're all dancing together. And it's like very much we're like in our own world. And maybe someone heard me say something to Phil and it was like, oh, Americans. And uh, so this guy comes over and is like, like, where are you guys from? And the two French women were like, you know, Paris, whatever. And then we were like America. And he was like, where? Phil said New York. And I was like, California. And he's, he said, me too. Where? And I said, LA. And he said, San Francisco. I said, he said, I'm from San Francisco. And I said, I know. And he said, what? And I just went, yeah. and he was like, oh, my whole thing. And I was like, yeah. And he just was like, you're an asshole. And he walked off. Whoa. But I was just so, I was like, why are you bothering us? We're doing this whole fuck, like, it doesn't matter. We're not going to connect over anything. Yeah. And I had been drinking for about. (laughs) I get that. It's kind of the similar, like, oh, you go to UCLA? Do you know John? Yeah. It was like he was gearing up toward that. I don't blame you. Yeah. I, 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 uh. (laughs) It's a good. (laughs) But Phil was like, holy shit, dude. You just gave him a, like. I could tell. Well, fuck you. That's funny. Damn. Well, speaking of. That. that. <laughs> Speaking of the best segue, <laughs> should we talk about Shopify? Oh yeah, man, these poor people, these poor Shopify people. So the stock, not not, not the head of Shopify, but the Toby. people getting yeah. uh, laid Toby off. Lutka. Here. They laid off ten percent of their global workforce, and they they reported uh, lackluster earnings. They had went from they had gone from the stock went up like three hundred and fifty percent. In 2020, it yeah, just of course. skyrocketed. Because what was the narrative? Everybody was saying that oh, because of the retail is dead. Retail is dead. E-commerce. Everyone's shopping online. Well, they said specifically, e-commerce's growth has been pulled forward by like five years. Right. Because you can see the trajectory of e-commerce sales as a percentage of total retail sales. And yeah, they were like, oh, the pandemic has permanently changed. Shopping habits. Right. CEO but, acknowledged he had misjudged how long the pa- pandemic-driven e-commerce boom would last. And amid a broader pullback in online spending, Shopify would move to cut a number of roles. Yeah. Because they, 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 ent- and uh, you know, I can't blame them, but he said it's now clear that bet didn't pay off. What we see now is the mix is reverting to roughly where pre-COVID data would have suggested it would be at this point. It's still growing steadily, but it wasn't a meaningful five-year leap ahead. So that's sucks ass for a bunch of people who just got laid off and uh you know hope they're going to be okay they did give them all i think 16 weeks of severance severance pay and i think they said that their stock vesting cliff would just be so like if you had three years left to vest they would just give it all to you which is pretty fucking tight if that's what that means yeah but it's still a lot of people we were sharing that that reddit post of the guy who was like i moved here i just relocated from spain family of five he was talking about, and because it's like, you know, surely you'll get another job, you'll land on your feet. But for that high position role, he was talking about six months of interviewing. Yeah. Which is insane. Yeah. Who the fuck? Why are you guys taking so long? It's, hey, you smart? Yeah. Hey, you want a job? Yeah. How's this amount? <laughs> nah, higher. Okay. How's about this? Okay. Yeah, good. And the time. Boom. Done. And the time it took them to interview, their business model fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that. <laughs> Uh, it is, I mean, he was pretty much, it, it's, 
I remember being kind of incredulous toward it too, because I thought, I mean, yeah, people's habits are shifting toward e-commerce increasingly, but also people are going to go back to wanting to go be in a <clears throat> store. I mean, I prefer it. Yeah, well, no, sometimes. I mean, I th- yeah, that, I mean, we're joking, but he made a bad bet. I don't blame him exactly. I think my fear was that everything was just going to become a hollowed out. I mean, we would drive around peak pandemic and we'd go, you know, you'd see all the closed stores and we were like, these are all just going to be Amazon fulfillment centers. Like, yeah. this is, it's going to be so tragic. Yeah. And that hasn't happened, luckily. And they also had, a speaking of Amazon fulfillment, they had acquired some company for around $3 billion that is like a fulfillment type of deal to compete directly with Amazon. I remember that that was, yeah, that was like a big headline that Shopify is going to give Amazon a run for their money. And, you know, I mean, so it's funny because they're still growing. It's just that the pace at which they were posting returns the last two years has slowed dramatically. They went from like 57% revenue growth to like 80% revenue growth to now back to, I think, 22% in quarter one and even lower for this second quarter. And they went from making like a hundred and something million dollars in profit last year or two years ago to losing like 800 million or something like that. Sorry if I'm not getting the numbers right. But the point is the growth is slowing and that scares the stock. But we asked for comments, crunch those numbers and let Ben know. Yeah, but, but Shopify is already down 80% from its peak. So one could argue that it's already been priced in because the market, as we've said, is forward looking (laughs) and the market has had time to process this shit. And that's why if you're out there and you've bet against it on earnings or something, they posted this bad, quote unquote, bad quarter. The stock was up. And that's kind of like that's that's been a, a, a theme in this earnings season so far is stocks aren't reacting as negatively as you would think. It's all priced in, baby. It's Well, you could say that it might be priced in, but then, yeah, it might just be a quick little... Um, uh, a moment of of uh, I don't know what the fuck word I'm looking for neutrality respite I don't know <laughs> was that the word you were looking I for? don't know someone's gonna help me out I don't know commenters cash commenters hey. let them let them know friend of the pod cash <laughs> just poked his head through the curtain big shout out to cash looking oh looking so good I wish you guys could see him he was wearing a white uh, coat, a coat thing, maybe? jacket thing, denim. It looked like just sexy as all get out. Wait, but before we get too <laughs> off topic on this, I do want to point out this uh, New York Times article because it's very, it's connected. Oh, you mean liberal, liberal New York Times? Hey, you know I'm no big lying, fan, big fake fan news. of the New York Times, but I like this article pointing out. Uh, it's a, it's. A bit different. They're talking about the grocery delivery stores, and it's ba- yeah. it's it's titled "Maybe We Don't Need Groceries in 15 Minutes After All." And it's basically the explosion of grocery delivery stores. And she's talking about how she's seeing them pop up all over the place, and they start to look into the legality of these uh, fulfillment centers. Interesting. But then before they even do any type of uh, action on it, they're she starts to see they're dwindling. Right. Um, Wait, I don't understand. They're they're specific grocery stores that you can't you walk can't even into. Shop in. Oh, they're oh. just for they're, they're like just delivery hub. They're like ghost uh, kitchens, but for <laughs> these things and ghost kitchens, I I hate. I can't stand those ghost kitchens. There's so many good looking restaurants that I see on on Grubhub or whatever, and then when I see there's this one specific address on Western, on Western and just south of like Melrose, and I immediately know, oh, it's a ghost kitchen. Where they just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, a ghost kitchen is a kitchen that basically it cooks for... Delivery. It, but for a dozen different yeah, yeah, restaurants yeah. with... It's a weird hub. Oh, they make burritos. They make yeah. pizza. They make Italian. They make all sorts of shit. And the food is mediocre at best. Oh, dude. Mediocre is uh, is being nice. Yeah. And I went to pick up from there one time and, and never again because it's like lockers. Right. You go in and you got a locker and it just feels so transactional. It's like when you go to a, any restaurant with too big of a menu, you're like, well, I, there's no way you do all these things well. Except for Jitlada. Jitlada. But it's all Thai food. Yeah. But they've got like 160 things on that fucking menu. Yeah. But it's kind of all variations of like a... Fish and noodles and yeah. rice. And, so that's what Emil thinks about to, Thai food. He just thinks it's all the same. It's basically all the same, according to Emil de Rosa. 
<laughs> no, I'm talking about a diner where they're like, oh yeah, they'll literally have like oysters on there, and it's like, what are you doing, dude? What are you, John Mulaney? Do the, is this that is a John, John Mulaney, Mulaney bit? He's got a whole sketch on SNL about it. about That's... ordering lobster at a diner because there was a diner he must have gone to that had lobster, and he thought, but why don't people ever order the <laughs> lobster at the diner? <laughs> I'm going to order the lobster. Fuck you. Exactly. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. It, it, the thing that you always get at a diner, tuna melt. That's the best thing. I guess it depends where, where you're, when you're there. Yeah, that's true. Pancakes. Pancakes or a tuna melt. Those are the only. And sure. a cup of coffee. Oh, Coffee's always best from a diner with a thick old mug. Thicker than Nicki Minaj. I don't drink mugs. coffee, so I don't, uh, I can't partake in that. Get decaf. Sure. But there are a few... Choice quotes from this article. I'm going to read them to you because it makes me so happy. Read them as fast as you can. No, I'm going to do this one real fucking slow. (laughs) Hello. We want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Talkspace. Listen, folks, when it comes to therapy and psychiatry, getting the help you need has never been so simple. When you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device, it means therapy can be on your schedule. And alleviating the pain points like wait times to get an appointment or the travel time to get an office can free up time for the rest of your life. Talkspace is so convenient and accessible, it helps me feel supported around the clock. Talkspace lets you send and receive unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform 24-7. With Talkspace, you set goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable and make sure you're really progressing. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Therapy can be so helpful. Me and Ben both know, you know, you're going through something, you you want to talk about it with a professional, can be um, so productive beneficial Beneficial. i true story i just saw a friend of mine um when i was in new york and he said you know you are a completely different person than who you were uh just like three four years ago therapy baby therapy baby. yeah talk space is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy instead of waiting for an appointment you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24 7 and they'll engage with you daily five days a week that's huge folks And Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. Get this. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off of your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code TRILL to get $100 off of your first month and show your support for the show. That's TRILL and Talkspace.com. So basically, she started looking into him, right? And and the numbers started dwindling. And the huge inf- the infusion of capital in these businesses was predicated in large part on the misguided assumption that certain distinctive habits Americans acquired during the pandemic would endure. Mm-hmm. I was worried about that as well, right? Um, <clears throat> but so other delivery services have also vanished. In March, Instacart, sl- Instacart slashed its valuation by nearly 40%. Wow. You could not buy a Peloton bike at the height of the pandemic when the stock was trading at $171. Now there are more listed on eBay than you can count, and the share price has fallen below $11. Wow. But so what's happening? People want to actually be out in the world. They don't want to be like shoved away in their apartments ordering all these things. For all of its insistence on credentialism and ostensible reliance on inscrutable analytics, the elite financial class all too often defaults on myopic and intuition. Whether it's the feeling that charismatic people like the WeWork founder Adam Newman must know what they are doing, or in his in, in, or in this instance, the conviction that because people were exercising in their houses and ordering meatballs and bounty online in the months before vaccination, they would want to keep at it forever. Yeah. We want to go out, baby. That's a very astute um, observation, and I feel like it really captures a moment really well. That, yeah, we, uh, the, for the majority of us, let's get on with it. Let's uh, go back to shopping, man. Give me some retail therapy. Just seeing fucking people. Yeah, seeing man. people talking. So when I was on the flight home yesterday, my, my, uh, my two days ago for you guys, but my, Back of the, my back I of the. I love s- how you pause for laughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it, but I better give Emil a break because he's gonna want to chuckle. <laughs> he's gonna want to laugh at me. And then I see you holding back laughter. Yeah. Well, so my my TV didn't work. The Wi-Fi didn't work. I didn't have a book. My phone was gonna be dying, so I wasn't gonna do anything. I had nothing to do. So I watched the second half of the new Batman movie over the shoulder of the person in front of me 
and thank God she had subtitles on. And that 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 did something for me. But then I went up to go to the bathroom. I didn't even have to go. I just thought, oh, I'll just go back there and stand. And I ended up talking to a flight attendant for like 20 minutes about airplanes and airlines and stuff. We had a great conversation. Yeah, and- we got another one. <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask her to show me the um, the sleeping quarters for the flight attendants because it was on a 767 where they you had that. like, hey, hey. Uh, what do you say you show me the uh, sleeping quarters? But like, I, I'm interested in it because I like airplanes. No, I'm actually a plane guy. <laughs> this is not sexual at all. But I felt that. I felt that kind of moment of, I just want some human connection. I want to oh, talk to somebody. Dude. And it was great. It was refreshing. 100%. Because here's another thing. I'm I'm increasingly getting more upset and disturbed and just bad vibes from being in public places where people are on their phones. It just feels it feels uh dystopian. It feels like just a bunch of I hate sounding like a Tumblr teen, but a bunch of sheep like yeah. with their pacification thing. Just hey, I've got a spare moment, better pacify myself. And I mean, I admittedly I do it all the time. And I do it under the guise of, well, I need to check stocks. I need to do that. But most of the time, if I've got nothing else, I try to just put it away and be in the moment, whatever that means. Oh, I'm in line for tacos. Better be in the moment and <laughs> you know, point, you know, make an observation to the person next. But that's the kind of interaction that I like and that I miss. Right. You know, pointing out to the woman, hey, that's my dog <laughs> piss. And then getting burned by it. No, I know. Yeah, when I'm on a date, I'll uh, if she like goes to the bathroom, I'll I'll purposely not pull out my phone, Same. and I'll be like, when she comes back here, she's gonna be like, wow, he didn't even pull out his phone. What a cool Wouldn't, fucking guy. I bet guy. she doesn't even know. Doesn't even know. Yeah, doesn't nobody care. knows. I should have looked at my phone. I would have been less bored. I want, I'm just like there for five minutes. Going, yeah. No, she'll be back, and she'll and, see how cool I am. Yeah, and I wish someone at the restaurant or the bar or the bartender would notice and be like, wow, I noticed you didn't even pull out your phone. That's pretty cool, but nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. They go, pull your phone out. You look like a freak. <laughs> yeah. so quit just staring off into the distance. But yeah. I'll tell you, I have been, I've been going out and doing things a lot more. I feel like I'm making an effort to like feel like I'm living in New York, and I'm just like, I'm going out during the week. Because I like in New York, it forces you to get out of your house because you live in a small apartment, and you're like, I can't stay here. I'm like, I'm getting dinner with people. I'm meeting people for drinks, going yeah. to yoga classes with friends. I saw you got um, wine with Adam yesterday. <laughs> Where'd you guys go? <laughs> it, was, it wasn't just wine. We got oh. dinner. Oh, you got dinner too? Well. Because <laughs> I got back yesterday and I I, was, I thought you guys We knew. met before you were. No, I know. I know, but. So. And it wasn't just me and Adam. Yeah. It? Oh, who else was? <laughs> <laughs> Phil and Danny were there too. Oh, man. I love the, I love those guys. Damn, that sounds fun. It was it was actually very fun. Where'd you guys go? It, we went to this great pizza place. Called? I don't want to blow it up. Who cares? De La Nana. De La Nana? Yeah. Where's that? LA. Arts District. Arts District. Oh, okay. What you you guys just got a bunch of pizzas? Got like four fucking pizzas. We got uh we got appetizers, blah, blah, blah. What, 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 you need to hear? You Sounds like hear? the Bacchetti night where we all had a great time. Yeah, except we replaced you with Danny, yeah. who's a way better vibe at dinner. A better vibe? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's yeah, what I, I said know. to you last time. You're a bad vibe at dinner. But you're not. You just weren't there. Yeah, I know, I know. We weren't like, let's wait for Ben to get home from no. LAX. Yeah, I know, I know. Plus, I got home. I got in at like 10 o'clock. But I'll and tell I you what. I went straight to in and out which I'm was a bad idea. Doing all this stuff? Yeah. So much happier. I fucking love being around people. Yeah, being around people rocks, except shitty people. Yeah, I don't obvious because <laughs> yeah. because I I feel that, but then sometimes I go out and I'm annoyed. I'm increasingly annoyed by what I consider to be rudeness or yeah, but being I don't consider it. Do, I'm hanging out with yeah. My I'm butt. talking about not the people you're with, but like oh people around you. Just god damn, I don't like it when people are. And I think that this is a side effect of of the technology being in our faces is it makes us a lot more inhuman to one another. People are so quick to be rude and mean. Yeah. You know, like the flipping people off in your car. Don't do that. All right. What the I, fuck? I'm, I'll tell you what. I'm also making a concerted effort to be... Nicer? Not nicer. Just like more... Less angry. 
Yeah. It's going to kill me. It's going to give me a heart attack. Like the kid that I saw in Long Beach, uh, 4th of July. He's he's riding his bike on the sidewalk in the wrong direction. And these people are walking are walking on the sidewalk. And they like have to dodge him and say, like, whoa, hey, come on. And then I see him turn around and just flip them off and keep going. Fuck you yeah. to that kid. Don't not, do that. Not me anymore. All those stories, man, that's in the past. Or like, yeah, just I'm be, a new guy. I feel like I saw that recently where, yeah, somebody, you know, at a store or something, you're in line and just, just be nicer. God damn. Yeah. Shithead. You know what it was too? I be started, nicer, bitch. Because whenever it was, like years ago, I had like a meltdown. Mm-hmm. Started, I went to, uh, it was like my family was like, we got to <laughs> get this dude some help. He's, oh, yeah. And so Buddy, they were literally like sending me to therapist. But, and then, I went on like a weird retreat. I was in this yurt with this guy in like the Catskills and then did I went to this woman's house and did a weird meditation retreat with her for Damn. like and the mindfulness stuff was like really helping. So I was doing that forever and then in the pandemic I just was like depressed and I was like I'm not going to fucking like mindfulness my way out of this and I just stopped doing anything. I was like I don't care. Just let like my mental health go to shit. And I kind of have been on that for a while. And then I was like Recently, I gotta fucking relax. I'm I'm a crazy person. Yeah, started getting back into all that stuff. All that shit's behind me. Yeah, I. I no, we'll see. I'm probably still. I'll 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 break sometimes. Well, that's why they call it a practice. Right, 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 right. right. Because it's it's never perfect. You're always practicing. We got to do a special like mental health episode. Yeah. Because I got some stories. A big one. Hang out with your friends, man. You got to get out there. Yeah. Sure. I'm constantly exposed to COVID and monkeypox, and I don't have any more money, but. I'm happy. Yeah. <sighs> what else we got? Wow, that was a fucking tangent. Yeah, but we like tangents. We like... Here at the show called Trillionaire Mindset on YouTube.com and Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts, we like to go off on tangents. Uh, We're the only finance show that goes off on tangents. <laughs> Someone commented on the TMG Studios app, the only finance show that talks about Elon Musk's dad's jizz. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah uh, should we jump ahead to Facebook, maybe? Mm, let's see. I don't know. Let's see. We got we're running. Now. We got Walmart slashing profit outlooks. Whatever the excess inventory thing. Woes continue. You know what I, I I'd like to do sometime is when we have too many news stories, we should do like certain podcasts do, and in the beginning just highlight everything. On this episode of Trillionaire, we're gonna have this. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about that, and then get into it. What do you think? I should bring that up in a meeting. No, we've done it, but then we don't get... The problem is we're morons. And then we, we've we literally done it, and we've talked about this, and they're like, you guys announced that you're going to do all these things, and then you guys talk about jizz. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, there's a lot to... <laughs> there's a lot there. Like, so, you know, best laid yeah. plans of mice and men, you know? So Zuckerberg and Facebook is maybe in trouble, what, because cause of Instagram? Oh, yeah. This, so in, this is from Mike Isaac. Um, summarizing the the big all hands that they had. So for anyone who doesn't, they you know Facebook reports the first drop in revenue in like a decade, yeah, or something. By the way, they are the only they are the only social media company who is above their IPO price. Snap is up under, Pinterest is under. Not nah, Pinterest always bounces back though. Remember <laughs> that. That is a good, always a good bet. <laughs> That's a joke. Hey, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Glenn. So Facebook's decade-long streak of nonstop revenue growth has come to an end. Social Network reported its first ever yearly decline in revenue for the second quarter, announcing a 1% drop to $28.8 billion. Oh, and predicted tragic. that growth in the third quarter could fall even more. They uh, So basically, yeah, the ad market is shit, except oh, for the podcast ad market. Yeah, so d- we've talked about that a little bit, but the, the, the figure is wild. Apple's Ask App Not to Track prompt on iPhones has made its ads much less effective, costing Meta $10 billion. Jesus, and that not to mention Snapchat. They got decimated. Yeah. At first, they were on the tear. They they had rallied from a couple bucks to $70, and now it's all the way back down to where they started. Just all because of Apple. Just moved some things around. So insane. Insane. Yeah. That Now that is power. Yeah, Yo, you cost me $10 billion? I'm you want fucking to see power. Up. Tim Cook. What's this that? is power. Is that Lion King? No, that's <laughs> but that's close. That's the same guy. Yeah, it's uh Tim Jim James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. Yeah, so it's in some Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. He's talking to, he's like a king. See, and... Ben, this is why we can't do the thing at the top <laughs> and say we're gonna get to all these things. Well okay, so 
But then, so they had they had the dipshit looking guy from who looks like he looks like uh, Herman Mun. No, not the Harry Mun. What's the uh, Munster kid's name? Eddie Munster. Eddie Munster. He the, the Widow, head. Of, oh, Widow's Peak guy. Yeah, the head oh, of Instagram. Adam Masseri. Yeah, Adam Masseri, the head of Instagram. Masseri, Masseri, Masseri. Came on. Came on. He posted it on Twitter. Oh, he does have a Widow's Peak. Yeah, and he looks like Eddie Munster, but grown up. There was a show called The Munsters. <laughs> I think they're remaking it or something. Oh, great. So you guys are going to love that joke in a year to two years. Yeah, but so <laughs> anyway, he came on to explain why Instagram is but basically going to give us what we but don't But he was want. specifically, I think he was responding to the Kardashians. Oh. So the Kardashians put out this post that said something like... Uh, Stick to being... Instagram. You know, make Instagram Instagram again, basically. Yeah. We want... It's because they feel powerless. <clears throat> they said something like, you know, we just want Instagram to be cute pictures of our friends that we can scroll through. And honestly, I mean, scroll through your Instagram. It's it's all first you get ads and then you get videos of shit you're not following. Yeah, but even and then, Ben's it's like, is mostly uh, things. What you don't get? To I talk miss for playing one... guitar. It's the thing. I'm like, what? Just the fact that this shit exists. Sorry. Continue. Continue. Well, it's hard to say the joke when you cut it off. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. It's okay. Just make go. the joke. No, no, no. No, that's it. I just. It just depresses me. I was just gonna say Ben's ads are mostly them asking if he's been exposed to a chemical that's given him. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I, on a, on an army base in North I wish Carolina I in the '80s. Wish I could have just gotten it out. Fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, mine's mostly titties and airplanes. Mine's like dogs and self help. I get a lot of like. It's weird. My explore page is full of you know like here's why all your relationships fail <laughs> like, okay who fucking a- so it's like what am i clicking on yeah i don't know why mine is like portuguese women in portugal just like bikini cl- i know why. and i why i don't i don't know why and okay he's winking at me <laughs> so i've even I've gone so far as to i'm like this is great but I click the you three like dots. Portuguese women love what you're doing. I say not interested, not interested. It started showing me a bunch of Stranger Things memes, and I'm like, why the fuck is it showing me this? Shit? Yeah, you gotta hit that for my Twitter was full of fucking Joe Rogan MMA, and I had to keep just not interested. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, for a while, mine was a bunch of Elon Musk lover boy memes. Did you see how when he posted the thing about not having sex, he got all these fanboys being like, offer- "I'll suck you off." Yeah, I. But they were unironically not but, yeah, yeah, yeah. being like, "I'll ask my." I asked my wife, and she said I could suck. I you will off. suck you off, sir. <laughs> and then people would react and be like, "What?" And they'd say, "Listen, if it's for the betterment of humanity, you bet I'm gonna suck off that." We'll never get to Mars if we don't empty this guy out. <laughs> God, his, wild shit. I wonder what I do. I have to wonder what his dick and balls look like. Elon Musk, probably just like a dick and balls. Yeah, but like, I don't know. You can tell. I have a theory that you can tell what a man's penis looks like by his hands and his fingers. For the for the viewers at home, here you go. <laughs> yeah, here you go. So I used to work with this guy. I won't say his name, but he would stand over my shoulder and point at my screen, and he had a weird crook on the end of his finger and i was like oh this dude dick is weird looking why dude just because how his fingers you'd be like hey look at that right there he had like a new jersey he hated cilantro he was that kind of new jersey guy oh i fuck it just if we're getting tacos for lunch just make sure no cilantro and he had a weird finger and i just knew his dick was fucked up so <laughs> adam at dinner brought up the last time we were both at dinner and we all showed each other dick pics yeah <laughs> what did he say about it? Was that weird? I think <laughs> I don't know. He didn't do it. Yeah, he was the only one who did. <laughs> right. But what did he say? Was he Is that why I wasn't invited to was birthday? Like, kind of a bad vibe at dinner, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, he just kind of was like he just it was just an offhand comment. He was like, "Yeah, and the last time we showed each other." Yeah. Anyway, uh, so Instagram's basically yeah. I mean, that's what we were talking about. Everybody's threatened. Everybody's everybody's threatened by TikTok, <laughs> and they should because it. God, he's so fucked up looking. Well, he so just, they yeah. Let's watch the video. Yeah, and then we can talk about. It. He talks funny too. Instagrammers, you can change it. He's very annoying. Yeah. Right now we're experimenting with a number of different changes to the app, and so we're hearing a lot of concerns from all of you. 
So I wanted to take a few moments. Damn, dude, he really is on Eddie Munster mode with that haircut. Dude, he also sounds like, did he used to be a boxer or something? Is he I think he's Israeli, and so he has an accent. That's not an accent. That's like a speech impediment. Well, so then that makes me an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I don't know. I don't actually hear it because I'm not. <laughs> Continue. Seeing a new full screen version of a feed or you're hearing about it, know that that is a test. It's a test to a few percentage of people out there. And the idea is that a more full screen experience, not only for videos, but for photos, might be a more fun, engaging experience. But I also want to be clear. It's not yet good, <laughs> and we're going to have to get it to a good place if we're going to ship it. This is what I'd like to tell the listeners of this show. It's not yet good. We're working on it. Yeah. And if you're seeing it like this, it's going to it's gonna get better. Yeah. We're going to do the stuff Ben's talking about where we're going to talk. We're going to say what we're going to talk about, and then we're actually going to talk about yeah. it. But right now, we're not good. Yeah. But uh, I think basically he's echoing what uh, Mark Zuckerberg said, which was that, and I, I think Mark Zuckerberg is probably frustrated by the sheer size of Facebook now because now they've got just so many people working there that there's no way that they've got the top talent anymore. And that's probably how it used to be when they were lean and mean and they had, Wait. he basically said at their all hands, like, hey, there's clearly a lot of people who sh don't belong here. Did you see the guy who called in and, and was like, asked about vacation? Did yeah. You? Yeah. Well, it was pre recorded. I know. But and that's the fucking stupid thing. He he knew he was definitely prepped. He knew the fucking thing was coming, and then he does this like, <laughs> I bet you guys can tell from my reaction how I feel about this. Yeah, Th that's the thing is they're 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 trying to. But I love for for anyone who doesn't know huh. this absolute king calls in from Chicago and is just like, I'd like to know. Well, and Mark Zuckerberg's talking about how fucked they are. And he's like, I'd just like to know if our uh, days off are going to stay the same that we instituted for the pandemic. Yeah, and Mark's like. Mark Zuckerkorn's just upset because he wants everybody all hands on right. deck to compete with TikTok. You don't understand. He's going to work you like Elon Musk. Yeah. By the way, the most Israeli accents have a lisp. They talk like this. They've got the the Israeli accent is a lot like this. Hmm. They talk like this. So Instagram is going to have reels now, okay? Uh, and they do a. Uh, oh, I mean that's so uh, many places. Uh, 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 how do you how say, say um, <laughs> mall? Uh, mall. Uh, the shopping mall. Oh, that's that's how uh, in Greece it's uh, instead of a. Uh, 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 so <laughs> wait. <laughs> What? So uh, <clears throat> he also goes on to say that you know they're they're fucking pivoting to video in a big way. They're like yeah. your pictures are still going to be there. We're still going to feed you suggestions. And he says the suggestion thing is not good. Um, and yeah, the app is not going back to what you want it to be. Yeah, it's and going to. They're going to try to be TikTok because it's kind of. They're kind of turning into Facebook in the sense that they're just late. Oh, all the yeah, trends, it's just going to be a dead app. Like, yeah. who goes on Facebook? I still don't understand what reels are versus videos versus it's confusing. To reels me. are basically TikToks on Instagram. But how is that different from the other video thing that you can put? Uh, not a highlight, but there's another one. That, uh, oh, where it's just an actual video. Yeah. And it's not a, I don't know. It That pisses me off. Okay, they're telling us we can rap now. Uh, well, yeah, so real well, fast, the Kardashians, uh, though, are, are pissed off about it because they are very, very much threatened by... TikTok and the in the micro celebrity that TikTok creates because why would you need because the Kardashians aren't entertaining outside of pictures and outside of keeping up with the Kardashians. I mean, how are they? That's a huge. Well, yeah, but their 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 relevance is fleeting if this trend is to continue because their prominence is mostly Instagram. Mm, but I mean, that it was is. always going to happen. They're fucking weird. No, because they've Reality. been on top for a long time. God, what a disgusting culture we have. Yeah, now it's time to move over for uh, some TikTok dancer. I, I, I say make those the Da Vinci twins. <laughs> those are our new guys. Yeah, make those They're guys. They're doing a bit, right? They're not that dumb. I pray to God that they are. I think they are. I really hope. Da Vinci? Da Vinci? It that does suck, though. That is now all of our entertainment is just like... Dipshits? Well, when I first got on TikTok in the pandemic, it seemed like... It seemed somewhat entertaining and somewhat real. Yeah. But then just a couple months into looking at it, I was like, wait, everyone's just like setting up fake yeah. stuff. Yeah. Can, can and we? It's just bad. I do want to talk about a certain TikTok trend. This is what I kind of wanted to talk about with Cody, though. All right. Then Maybe we'll I'll, I'll save it. You know what I saw? What? Someone sent me this 
like Jack dude. They were joking. They were like send. They sent me this Jack dude on um, on TikTok. So I was looking at it, and they were like, "Why don't you look like this?" And he wasn't like so cartoonishly big, but I was like, "I could never do that. I don't understand how he does it." And then I scrolled through enough, and he was very open about using steroids and stuff. And I was like, I love that. Because honestly, I've watched, I've looked at people's stuff and I'm like, how do you get your, I don't understand. We're being yelled at right now, dude. This is crazy. We're being yelled at via text. Let me finish the story. (laughs) So the guy was on steroids? Yeah. And I'm like, (laughs) and I finally connected the dots of like, oh, if you get to a certain, there's, you just can't do it naturally. Yeah. Or maybe you can, prove me wrong. Yeah. Well, so anyway, that about does it for the regular episode. We got a lot to talk about. I'm going to be showcasing my new Volvo in the after hours, but also when I get it on Sunday, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be driving it down from Northern California. So wish me luck. Kill your parents. Quit your job. Shit those pants. Show pictures of your dead parents and your shitted pants. What? No. Uh, what? Yeah, don't do that. I'm <laughs> joking. Insane. I'm being facetious. <laughs> don't absolutely don't kill your parents, but kill your parents and quit your job and poop in those pants, those beautiful pants. Uh, subscribe yeah, but also kiss your parents yeah kiss them clean your pants don't get a your... job shut the fuck that's the that's the moral of the show so subscribe at tmgstudios.tv subscribe at uh, youtube.com slash trillionaire mindset and uh, and we'll see you in after hours we'll see you in after hours love you bye this week on after hours <laughs> in a world no, it's that like. Give it to us. How's the episode going? Turning it's going good? okay. It's going all right. Yeah. Cool. Ah! Sign up on tmgstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.